few more lessons for the centerpiece and reception class. I am delighted to be back and I got a special candle to celebrate our time together. You are an inspiration. I was inspired to make these lessons uh, by one of the people that are in the class and they asked how can I make a centerpiece with maybe less ingredients or less flowers and so I'm going to demonstrate that for you now and I'm going to do a series of arrangements that just have a few things in them and you can see how you can still go through the layers and the levels and achieve the goals in a different way. I'm actually really excited to do this. So let's start. I have um, this containers from Accent Decor. I'm going to fill it with some water. I have chicken wire and tape in there. Ideally I would have a frog in here but just because of how the container shaped um, didn't fit in there quite right. So we're using some using some wire for this one. The nice thing about using a flower frog is that you really don't have to use quite as many ingredients because you're not working really hard to cover this base area. You can have a little bit more freedom and breathing room in that area. But I'm going to use this Baptista as a base. This is beautiful local local flower that I've got right now and I'm going to work on establishing the shape of my arrangement and then covering this low area just like we do in the first level. So I'm going to clean up a few pieces here. Baptista is one of those things that I find most commonly locally, but you can find it wholesale from time to time in the spring, so keep an eye out for it. I think it's a really beautiful green to have, and the foliage on it is fantastic. Um, even after the flowers are done and are finished, I get a lot of questions about um, people asking for greenery, and what kind of greenery do I like, and everything on my wholesale list seems kind of boring, and I think that if you just think about the flowers that you're using and the greenery that might be a part of them and incorporate, you know, use use your base greenery of something maybe that's a little bit more ordinary, but spice it up with these special greens from the actual flowers. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken all of my Baptista apart and, you know, sorted it out and, um, got it all put together and I'm going to start with the greenery pieces of it. So this is the part of level one where we are establishing the shape of the arrangement. And as I do this, I'm going to put them in in the tripod uh, placement pattern. So we'll do one, two, and three. In that first arrangement that we did in the class. I went with the tall one up and then we did these two shorter ones on the side. I'm going to change up the shape a little bit for you. So now we have more of an, a triangle that's going up and then way out as opposed to one that's going up and then out to the sides. There's just a little switch there. Please feel free to adjust and rethink what makes sense for you. So I've put together this process and this way to do it so that you can do it, you can follow after, you can sub for the ingredients that you have and that you use and that you can create something similar. But once you've mastered this, please move past it and really break out of that and write your own rules for how you can put something together. Just make sure you use the principles to guide you. And principles and rules are two different things. Principles are those things that have been there for centuries that 
people are always drawn to. They're kind of in us. And then rules are the ways that we get to them. So what I'm teaching you in this class, there's a, there's a mixture. You'll see both principles and rules in the class, but keep your eye on um, a different way to end at something similar. Maybe you go in a different order or uh, you just experiment with different shapes and similar ingredients. And, you know, there's more than one way to achieve the the goals of flower arranging. So keep it fun, lively, interesting for yourself and always be switching up and challenging what you're doing. See if you can do it more efficiently. See if you can do it in a way that you find you know, just better for you and what you're doing, your business model. really love doing arrangements like this that have just a few ingredients in them whenever I'm arranging. Just maybe, maybe I take a little walk and I have a few things um, from the garden that I want to put together and you don't have all of the different pieces blooming all at the same time. But you can use what you can always use what you have to create something wonderful. I encourage you to do that. So now I'm adding this uh, Baptista flower and it's taking colors out to the sides of my arrangement. And I'm really, I'm, I might, you know, have gone in here and done some of this first if I was using different ingredients, but I like to move from one ingredient to the next. So since this flower and foliage are the first thing that I picked up, I want to kind of stick through using this whole little bundle up before I move on to the next one. Still working around. When I put something here, I want to add something here and add something back here as well. I might go a little bit out of order on that just as I'm looking at maintaining the visual balance of the arrangement, I wanna make sure my concentration on the right side of the arrangement of the yellow is similar to my concentration on the left side of the yellow to keep that feeling grounded and steady. So in my quest to do that, I might, uh, might not you know, go the whole way around. I might pop two things in one place for a minute, just, just as I'm trying to get that balance worked through. For everything you put in, there's another thing that needs to go in to balance it out quite often as you work. Like that little piece of Baptista was too Mm -hmm. It's kind of stubby for this side. And I wanted to put this nice long piece over there. And then this, I'm actually going to trim some of these flowers off and use this little bundle of flowers up here at the top. Nice and low in the arrangement. Start covering in some of this area down here. You can see when I put that in there, that was kind of on the same level as this one. So I'm going to trim it just so that there's a graceful progression of how these lay. So now my eye can move from this one and then just gently down to this one. Okay, concentration's a little bit little bit heavier on this side in a way I think just because it's so high but we're going to add some iris and some other things and I think that will balance this out but generally the the color distribution looks good to me of course everyone has a slightly different eye you might prefer it to have a little bit more it's up to you
Okay, I'm gonna put just a few of these little greenery pieces in here low. And then we're gonna follow after this with ladies mantle, which is my favorite greens. It's on wholesale lists quite a lot. I feel like it's overlooked. I love everything about it. The texture is really sweet, the leaves on it, just the yellow, the little bit of yellow that it has in there in the green. It's a really great transition and something that makes, anytime you're using yellow, I just think, feel like it really makes the yellows pop. And in a way is a nice transition flower because it has that uh, green, but then that green yellow undertone, which is a nice way to bridge the gap between the green Baptista foliage and the yellow flower. Now we add this and it just makes this flower sing even more. So when you're thinking about choosing flowers that complement each other, you want to think about their colors and what types of colors are in each of the ingredients that you're using and do they give a nice gentle progression between shades of green and how does the light reflect through the Baptista foliage? Does it have more of a blue undertone or a yellow, yellow undertone? What, what kind of those very subtle elements are at play? I think one of the things that makes for great designers is whenever you're very observant and you notice these subtle differences in the flowers and in the greens as you're working and you consider that as you place them. Ladies mantle is a great shape. You can do quite a lot with it. So I can snip here and now I've made two pieces. And the way that the foliage sits here at the base had some nice coverage low in the arrangement. So this will drop down and sit right on the, the chicken wire, help cover that up a little bit. And this one lends itself to going out a little higher. So I'm gonna let it sing in there. So I'm still in level one, establishing the base, the shape, Covering the mechanics. This one has a short stem, so I'm gonna get rid of this so I can get it down a little deeper in the water. I'm really happy with the coverage that we have on the base right now. I don't want to get too much in there and not leave room for my other stems. I do want to bring some of the texture of this out to the sides though and incorporate that into the shape of the arrangement. So that's what I'm that's how I'm going to handle these last few pieces that I have. Oh, this one is so pretty. I'm tempted to do something up here with it. A little out of the box. Oh, look at how the light goes through and you can see it's little fuzzy, little fuzzy pieces. Sweet. It's not quite right. Let's, that's pretty. Let's do this. It was causing a little bit of a balance issue. Just wasn't quite the right. This needed to be right about here for that to be able to work, in my opinion, because I was just going straight across the top at that point with something that's green versus something that's yellow. And I just, I, was, I wasn't sensing the visual balance that I like to have in my arrangements. So that's why I switched that around. And so I have one, two, what's the third? 
third piece of my tripod over here. Since these are being added to help a little bit with shape, I want to maintain that one, two, three. Keep that balanced and the rest is mostly in the center. All right, iris, the bearded kind. So pretty, I love this flower. It's a little bit of a challenge to arrange with. I'm not gonna, not gonna beat around the bush about that. I've gotta find a good spot for them. So right now, I'm moving into level two, which is where generally I would use an implied line to create movement through my arrangement. And then in the third level, I would have, a, it, the goal would be rest, and I would have either a focal point or a light airy flower or maybe both. But since we're using limited ingredients, we have to think through, okay, well, can this iris function both as um, implied line and as a focal point that draws attention or do we want to use those principles of design in this arrangement so those are some things to think through so I'm breaking out of that mold just a little bit like this this doesn't have the traditional implied line that I talked about before it's a little bit different although once these get in here, I think they're naturally gonna, you know, create that. And whenever you're grouping colors together like this, uh, that creates a resting point and a, a place for the eye to stabilize and focus. So that's the overall goal. You can get to it different ways. That's what we're gonna do today. And with iris, they don't last for very long, so it's good to kind of keep an eye. You've got a bud here, bud here, bud here. Those, those things will open. Something to keep in mind, too, as you're arranging. It's not going to look the same way tomorrow as it does today. ones that I just have an iris bud I want to tuck behind one of these other or an iris flower that's completely open I want to tuck a bud behind it so that it will replace it whenever this one is spent that's one way that you can take flowers that are a little bit more fragile and add longevity to the arrangement for your clients if that's something that you are needing to work on if this is a piece that needs to last in a hallway or something like that. If it's an event flower, probably doesn't matter quite as much unless the flowers are going out with the family afterwards. You know your people and what you need to do, but I think chasing after it with a bud is always a good rule of thumb. Just this tall one that I have just back a little bit in the arrangement to balance it I was too heavy with irises on this front side so adjusting that back helps me to maintain this balance physically that I'm working on and visually as well thing I have are just a few little Queen Anne's lace flowers. In this side that maybe doesn't have quite as many iris, I'm going to do a little grouping of these. Again for balance. I'll 
leave a few of these lacy foliage pieces on here. I like the variation that we have with the ladies mantle leaf and the Baptista and this. You will notice though when the light shines through this I'm catching yellow but there is just a little hint of some kind of cool color in there. A little bit of blue, very subtle. finding myself to be really excited about these. There's a lot of size difference between this large one and this, these smaller ones. Maybe we could do a pair of the larger ones. Let's see if there's enough variation. Okay, I prefer that. Really grouping these together does create that, that resting point. You'll see that concentration of color. Your eye is drawn into that more than likely. And on this side, I'm going to let that implied line of the iris be the, the attention grabber on this side. And just accent with a little bit of this. Queen Anne's Lace and call it done. Thanks so much for watching.